What's up YouTube, I'm Daniel and I'm back with my next video and in this video, I'll be running through a beginner's guide on how to start out on the Step N app. So let's jump right in. Step N is a move to earn NFT game built on the Solana blockchain. And if you haven't checked out my intro video or walkthrough on the Step N app, please check it out in my channel or through the link below. Some of the things that I'll be covering in this video might not make much sense if you haven't watched the intro video. And like I mentioned, this is a move to earn NFT game and to play the game, you need to walk, jog, or run outdoors. Yep, you heard that right. Walking, jogging, and running outdoors is playing the NFT game. And I'll be covering the basic mechanics you need to get started on Step N. Do note that the app is currently still in its beta phase and not all the features are released just yet. Of the features that are released, the bare basics that you need to know are as follows. The energy system, the earning cap and mechanics, the sneaker type, the gem and sockets, and finally shoe minting. Of course, there are several other mechanics you need to know of as well, but you don't absolutely need to know of it to start off. You can read more about them in the step and white paper. Other useful information that you need to know is that NFT stands for non-fungible token. It is a unique token that cannot be replicated. GST stands for green satoshi token and is the in-game utility token. A quick and simple overview of the game is as such. You need to first purchase an NFT sneaker to play the game. However, later on, they will be rolling out the function to rent sneakers. But for now, you can only play the game by purchasing them. During exercise, you'll consume energy and shoe durability to earn GST or GMT tokens. In other words, your exercise converts energy and durability into tokens. Of course, there are limits to how much tokens you can earn per day. It really depends on your energy cap and durability. Using these earned tokens, you can increase the energy cap, you can buy more or better quality sneakers, you can restore shoe durability or even increase the sneaker level. This way, you can increase the number of tokens earned over time. You can also profit off your tokens by cashing out your surplus tokens through the in-app swap function. Currently, at the time of the video recording, one GST is roughly about $335. US Next, about the energy system. As mentioned, you consume energy during your activity to earn tokens and the energy replenishes at a rate of 25% of max every 6 hours until energy cap. You'll start the game with 1 sneaker and 2 energy caps and 1 energy equals to 5 minutes of physical activity. You can increase the energy you have by holding more sneakers. The rate at which your energy cap increases is as per the table below. Additionally, owning a sneaker with better rarity than common will allow you to have additional cumulative energy caps. I'll be talking more about the strategy on how to own more sneakers in my future videos. So like and subscribe to my channel to be notified of any future videos. Next, on earning cap and mechanics. For the daily token cap, You'll start off with a GST cap of 5 GST per day. This will be increased until 300 GST and 15 GMT per day. You can level up your sneakers to increase the daily token cap. For the daily energy cap, you'll start the game with a max of 2 energy and you can get a maximum of 20 energy cap a day. You can either get more sneakers or better quality sneakers to increase the energy cap that you have. The following factors affect the GST earnings during your physical activity. The five factors are as follows. The total energy that you have, the movement speed that you are moving at, the sneaker type, attribute, quality and level, the gem, the gem type, gem level and inserted socket quality, and NFT badges. We also see that the factors that affect the mystery box quality are the energy used in one single session and the luck value of the sneaker. In general, more energy and higher token daily cap allows you to earn more GST per day. Based on community statistics, you'll need to spend at least 4 energy per session to have a chance to earn a mystery box. I'll be talking more about this in my future videos. Next, you need to be aware of the different factors that affect a sneaker. You have its attributes, its type, its quality, and its level. There are four main attributes of a sneaker. It is 
efficiency, luck, comfort, and resilience. Efficiency is used for generating GST per minute. Luck increases the rate of mystery box during the physical activity session. Comfort is not currently used right now, but it influences the rental rates of your shoe in the future. We don't have the full details right now, but more to follow later on. And finally, resilience affects the rate of durability drop of the shoe. The higher the resilience, the lower the durability drop per activity or per energy spent. Next, we'll see that there are four main types of sneakers. You have the walker, you have the jogger, you have the runner, and you have the trainer. And each type of shoe has a different optimum moving speed, right? These change time to time depending on the updates of the app. Next, we need to check out the levels that the sneakers have. With each level, the sneaker will receive a certain number of attribute points and this can be allocated to the different attributes that you so desire. At certain levels, you will unlock the sneaker gem sockets. There are only 4 sneaker gem sockets per sneaker and these will be unlocked when you level your sneaker up. There are other milestone events that will be unlocked with the leveling up of your sneaker such as the shoe minting event which is unlocked at level 5. Finally, there are 5 different quality of sneakers and these are common, uncommon, rare, epic and legendary. The quality of the sneakers affect the base attributes of the sneaker. Next, we'll be talking about gems and sockets. Gems go from levels 1 to 9, and the higher the level of the gem, the more it adds to its base attribute. You can only insert a gem that is matching to the socket. And that being said, there are four different socket types. You have the yellow for efficiency, blue for luck, red for comfort, purple for resilience. The gem is able to augment the sneaker by boosting its base attribute. And not only does the socket have different types, it has different qualities depending on the quality of the sneaker. The better quality of the socket, the more it boosts its attribute. In general, most people look out for shoes with sockets matching their strategy. So for example, if you're focusing on running and you're maxing out efficiency, the best shoe that you can get is one that has all yellow sockets for efficiency and you can put them with the highest level efficiency gems. Next, I'll be running through briefly about the shoe minting factors. The maximum shoe mint count for each sneaker is 7 and the cost for shoe minting increases with the shoe mint count and quality. Of course, the trade-off is that at higher shoe mint count, you actually have a higher chance of multiple shoes being minted in the form of more shoe boxes. Next, we'll use the word vintage to refer to the parent shoes. So you have two vintage shoes coming together to mint one new shoe. And so here we see that the vintage type, the vintage socket and the vintage quality will affect the minted shoe. However, the vintage attributes does not affect the minted shoe. The minted shoe will have its attributes randomized depending on its quality. Some considerations before buying a sneaker. There are two main things to think about. First of all, it's strategy. What are you buying a sneaker for? Is it for exercise? Is it for flipping of NFTs? Is it for gaming? Is it for investment or rental? All these will affect the kind of shoes that you're looking for. It could affect the shoe main count. It could affect its shoe attribute, the shoe rarity, the gem slot the shoe has, or even the amount of capital that you're willing to fork out to buy the shoe. Next, at the core of it, you need to remember that playing the game means you need to engage in physical activity outdoors. And so your fitness level is very important. Knowing what fitness level you're at is one important factor. And choosing the shoe that matches your level of fitness will ensure the success and the sustainability of you playing the game in the long term. And so this will affect the type of sneakers, the number of sneakers that you'll buy, even the rarity of sneakers that you want to purchase. And currently there is a small price differential between the shoe types and it is the runners being the cheapest as of now. You've actually got to run at a pretty fast pace to maintain its optimum speed. I've got some gameplay footage using my runners in my other video, so do go check that out if you're interested. 
And so the basic way to participate in the app is purely for fitness. It can just be another app to record your physical activity, just like Strava. However, it's even better than Strava because you can even earn from the physical exercise you already used to do. If you're not so active, this can provide additional motivation for you to start exercising. Currently, I don't think it's very profitable to flip the NFTs. The only way you can possibly earn some substantial profits is through minting a shoe of a better quality and selling that. However, the chances of that happening isn't very high. Or else you can try selling gems and you can farm gems by maxing luck on your sneakers. For the gamers, and people who are here for investment and rental, it is a bit more complex as there are more things to think about. Also, because some features are not fully released in the beta version, thus for the gaming and investment or rental strategy, this will be relatively more long-term plays. I'll be uploading more videos to give more information about that in my subsequent videos. That's all for this video. If you found it helpful, do hit the like and subscribe to be notified of subsequent videos I'll be uploading on the Step N app. See you next time!